If anything, I'm looking forward to build as a man my my domain as a king, my kingdom. And then I hope to have it to where it's nicely laid out and I can have my queen come in and now she can help. And actually, she'll have the option of how she wants to help because I'm building success for me, mm. God's way. And then that's going to be translating to success on the earth. I'm going to I'm going to throw a monkey wrench in what you're saying. Let's go. Because I think what's happening. And by the way, let me just go ahead and say the 45 minute window block is out the door. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> so, Yo. <laughs> look, bro, take your time. We going to talk today. <laughs> Yo, let's go, man. Nah, I'm on it. OK. Um, I hear what you're saying and I agree with what you're saying. I think that there's a I think there's a natural tension that happens when you build this whole thing. It's you you build this temple. I'm I'm in shape. I got abs. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I don't eat pork anymore. I run, which I don't. <laughs> that's not my testimony because I love a good pork chop. So funny. Um, so I do all of that good stuff. My my credit's cleaned up. I make good money. Um, I have a house, I have a car, I travel, I read, I do all of these things that society is saying that a high value man is. And I keep putting that in quotes because I hate that term. Exactly. But I do all, I do all of these things where I would be a good catch to said Atlanta girl. Mm. <laughs> it, um, so I do all of that good stuff. And then I meet said Atlanta girl and we we decide to get married. What you just said, what marriage is, is the active dying of your individual self and building a life together. Only problem with that is that I've spent the last 10, 15, five years, whatever the case, building this thing on my own for me and my kingdom. And now... And to do that, don't be mistaken, mm -hmm. to do that, it takes a lot of discipline and a lot of, um, in the good way, selfishness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because you're hyper-focused on that thing. So now to do all of that and then turn, get married, and then do the exact opposite because marriage is a process of dying of your individual self and sacrificing yourself for your for your wife, for your family, uh loving your wife as uh, Christ, Christ loved, loved the, the church, church and yeah. gave himself a ransom for it. Yep. That's a very stupid love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, it's it, it's 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 real. And that's what Jesus is saying. Yeah. That's well, that's what Paul is saying. <laughs> like that's our model for how we should be a husband. It's a pool, bro. That's a pool. It's a pool. Because I've spent all this time being success and being selfish, and sick, that selfishness has gave me this level of success. Now you got to tell me for the rest of my life, I got to be the opposite of that. How do us as husbands, like, how do we live with that tension? How do we live with that tension? Or is that even accurate? Let me no, start you're, there. no, you're you're when I, gee, you nailing it, you nailing it. Oh man. So what I can tell you for, for me, as for me in my relationship with God, I'll give you an example. I, the reason I've been divorced twice, I mean, outside of me having to grow and mature emotionally outside of that, it was fear and fear is debilitating. So I would, I would run, I would, I would let go of that relationship at the expense of me giving my heart to a woman for her to break it. Mm. I would rather ensure my own heart, right? So what, what what Holy Spirit has shown me is now, Pete, the reason, gauntlet, whatever we'll call it, right? We'll call me gauntlet for tonight. <laughs> whatever <day>. you <laughs> whatever you want to say. G, GP, are you with me? <laughs> gauntlet, Pete. But um, this, this season of my life, God is allowing me to see that the reason I'm walking away, the reason I'm running away, and the reason I have ran away because I'm not doing that anymore is because I never trusted a woman with my heart. So the only way I can grow out of that fear is to surrender my heart to God. Mm. So I would know what my heart feels like to be protected in that space of vulnerability and surrender. 
so that I would know what it feels like to be protected so I would know how to protect a woman's heart. So I never had my heart protected. So I can't expect for a man, because even with one man, they can let us down. Any man can let us down, but God won't let us down. So doing something under what God has created or doing something in partnership with what God has created is the safest way. Ultimately, now going back to being a man that has built this thing up in his relationship with God, God's blessing. And you remember, the Bible does say a man that finds a wife finds a good good thing and receives favor. The truth of the matter is I haven't built a relationship with God where God can show me what it looks like for him to grow me and success the way he's intended and the way he's purposed me to be as as gone. That's super heavy. I don't want you to go past that. Okay. What do you mean by that? All right. So I've always found myself wanting to be in partnership. I, I told you I was codependent. So be, be it codependency, it's easy to get with somebody else as a human and, uh, a, 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 in my case, uh, a, a woman and say, let's build this together. Anything falls short, it's shaky, it's not stable anymore. Now I got to find my way out of this thing because Mm. I don't like that the ship is sink. It's a Titanic. It's a relational Titanic. And I would rather evacuate, make sure no one drowns because I don't don't have the ability to believe in this person with me at this time to feel like we can make it and we can recover from it. So I would I would leave now with my relationship with God. He said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. So if I don't know what that looks like to be stable, even when it looks shaky, but I'm trusting him then I can't translate that in a relationship when it comes down to it. So God can build me up in all that he knows he's made me to be. What do I look like walking in God's intent and purpose that he created me? Because mm-hmm. I can't look like that when I'm with a, with a woman and I'm, and I'm just me. Because she can't show me me. I can see a reflection of who I am, but I, I don't know how to grow me from my relationship with her. Yeah, God can grow me from my relationship with him. So as long as he grows me and I'm tr- surrendering to him, I'm literally the bride of Christ. Christ is the bridegroom. So he's nurturing me as a man because I'm submitted to him. So he's showing me what I look like as a bride so that when I become the bridegroom, she'll know what she looks like. So all of it is just a transfer. It's all of it is a relational transfer. I'm looking at the fact that God, you know me and you want me to be held accountable and be responsible. Yes, you made Adam first and then you brought Eve. You presented Eve to Adam. Then you made them work together. But Adam was given something Eve wasn't given. Adam was given the word from you. So in his relationship, mm. he was submitted to you because yeah. there was something he had to understand as you being his head, his covering, his creator. He submitted to that. So he he was a bride at one point. The men, the problem is most men don't see themselves at some point being submissive to another. Someone is greater. So if we don't see that and we want to lead, where, what are we leading? Who are we leading and where are we leading from? So we're not leading anybody. We're just with somebody. Not leading in tyranny in a tyrant way in tyranny. I'm talking about leading with a level of compassion, understanding, empathy, because you know how it felt when you felt vulnerable because you were building a relationship with your your creator. So you on your own. Imagine God saying, you know, I'm going to take you and I'm going to make you great. And this is who he's talking to is you as a man before you met your your wife. Yeah. And he fulfilled because you surrendered to him. He fulfilled everything he said he's going to do for you. You saw that relationship grow with you and him. Now he brings a woman to you and he's like, okay, now you turn around and you wash her with the word. You turn around, you do the same thing I've done for, for you and how you felt. You, you, you saw I never left you. You saw I was consistent with you. You saw that when times got rough, you can come back to me and you saw that there was always a way for you that was made. Live there, stay with me in that space. Because that way, when you do it, Adam, I'm going to put you to sleep one day, and I know that I'll be able to trust you when I bring this woman into your life because that woman's going to serve a purpose no differently than how I served a purpose for you. And you served a purpose for, for, for me being able to, to, to give love the way I love to, to give love. We as men, we should love to give love. But a lot of us don't stay enough with Christ to be able to receive the love that we can say, man, I'm I'm so full of it that I'm looking forward to giving it. This is a journey I've never been on except for this season. And I'm like, man, for me, like I love to serve and to know that at some point I can serve my wife because God is serving me and the benefits of him serving me and me 
doing that now and paying it forward is being able to feel like how God can feel towards us. That's a powerful place to be in. As you were talking, bro, I'm not going to lie to you. All I can think of was like, I'm losing viewer after viewer after viewer after viewer. Because, <laughs> my God, that's so good. Uh, no. <sighs> You said so much. Um, one of the things that stuck out to me, you said that we don't, us as men, we don't know necessarily how to be, how to accept submission from a wife because we ourselves have never been submitted. And bro, I'm thinking like 14 years, even like 14 years of my marriage, like, like have I ever, have I really been good on the other end of giving the submission? <laughs> Man, I don't know. I hope I have. I hope. I don't know. And I think it's like the grace of God that's kind of, you know, kept, kept me for this long. Um, I want to ask you a, I want to ask you something. Um, and this is probably going to be way more personal than you probably intended. Yeah. <laughs> so just um, when you said that things kind of got where it was like, uh, okay, the sinking Titanic. Yeah. And I'm like, Hey, I'm bail I'm bailing out. Yeah. Um, you don't have to get specifics, but like, what was the, what was the example of like, okay, this thing is going down. I need to bail. So be it my first marriage, I was 24. I married into a family. And my first, my son, was my ex-wife's fourth. So I came in to, we call it a blended, it's technically broken, broken family. And we came together with as much love as possible. So at 24, I was super ambitious. And uh, she already had three. She was great. She's still a great, great friend, a great mom. Um, she was a great person as well. She was five years older than me. She was married before me, so I was her second. Mm. So the the odds just I didn't count the cost, but the odds were already stacked against me. And I and I just finished like school and the band that I was in for maybe a year and a half. So I wasn't as my foundation wasn't as as firm. It wasn't solid. So financially, you can imagine what happened. And matter of fact, we got married in two thousand six, and the recession hit. Low key, two thousand eight. It was already sleeping in two thousand seven. Mm. You right, you right. It was two thousand eight that everybody got the the they felt it. Two thousand seven. I remember she was still looking for jobs and couldn't get a job in like mid to to the third or fourth quarter of two thousand seven. She couldn't find they. She couldn't get hired for nothing. And then it hit and it was like broadcasted. We're, we're in a recession. What field was she in? She was first, she was an artist and creative, but she also started getting into teaching and date like uh, uh, early childhood uh, child care. Okay. So she was in that space and it was like not a lot. And then she started applying to, I think, even the airport at one point and looking for that type. Because at some point you start off with what you believe you're good in and you don't find nothing. You just start looking for what you can get. Yeah. And what makes sense, at least enough to where you can support the the family and I was already working, but I was still working in the field of performing live on drums with artists. But it wasn't, and that's a whole different struggle. That there we go, and it was still coming. It was still coming in, like the the work was coming in, but it still was like I was working literally to make sure I can send money back. Yeah. It wasn't like I was receiving anything to keep that much during that time. So financially, it got rough, and when it got rough, we fell behind on a mortgage well it was my parents one of their other properties and we were three months behind and I knew I started getting stressed out and then my son we she unfortunately had a miscarriage when we tried the first time and we went and tried again intentionally because she was distraught she was like I don't even know if I can have a child for you mm -hmm. and I'm like now at that time I'm like 25 26 and I never had a kid yet so we we did again have uh, an attempt at it and we ended up being and, successful. And then as a 25 year old, 25, 26 year old man, like what do you do with that? 
Yeah. That's and but that's because my heart was big, but I didn't have I didn't have big sense. I was literally using my heart. It wasn't like I thought I didn't count no cost for anything except the one thing I kept telling myself that I do remember, the benefit of the doubt was she was already a mother taking care of her kids before she met me. So my mm. simplistic or oversimplifying of thought process was all I'm doing is coming in, I'm adding to what she's already been doing. It was like mm. she's been holding it down as a single mom on her own. Yeah. So that's a theory. Anyway. That's a theory. That's what, but it's not like we counted. I, I didn't count the cost for something that could have happened like a recession, like, yeah. or if somebody did happen to be incapable of working, we, we, I wasn't, it was, if everything is good, it looks good for as long as that works. Because you don't have enough life experience to know Thank that. You. Yep. Thank you. So that ship started sinking really quickly. It, it lasted for more, more about two years. And then immediately my son is getting ready to, be, be born and I had this I felt like I was faced with either being a father for some reason or being a husband and I'm like this husband stuff hasn't been working within the context of our, our, our unit I can't denounce being a father because I'm a son and I know what a father feels like towards me my father was amazing God rest his soul he was a great father I know how to be that better than I know how to be a husband mm. and my parents didn't even know I got married till after I got married so it wasn't like they were a part of the process. Yeah. They, my mom told me when she found out, when I told her I got married, she started crying. She was in Walmart. She said she just started crying. Literally. So I, I, I did things that I thought were okay. Glorified boyfriend with a contract. Not thinking about how that could affect mom and dad. Or better yet, a recession happens and we weren't financially astute. How that can affect even me. Like, let me keep it real. I couldn't even have sex because I was stressed. Folks don't understand. Do we really want to have that conversation? Uh, but I'm just, I mean, we, we're we talking. I mean, we ain't talking about no, we, we grown men. I couldn't, I wasn't even, I couldn't even, there was nothing stimulating. Nothing. So that at that point, you know it's rough. And I ain't, I ain't need no Viagra back at 20 something. I'm a bull, but. I turned into a little lamb at that point. Oh my God. Fix your face, G. Yeah. Yeah. Put the camera on you right now. No, oh, it is. Okay, good. It is. Because people don't understand how true that statement is. People have no idea how true that statement is because when the weight of the world is on you, and you don't have the answer, like, it's very, very hard to be Dirk Diggler. Huh? <laughs> Come on, Dirk Diggler. <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? It's very, very hard because, like, with, I, I think there's this misnomer about sex and genders because it's this idea mm. that um, women, it's all psychological, and with men, it's just like, hey, whenever the wind blows, we ready. But, man, let me tell you, hmm. when you feel like that you're not a provider, you're not a good husband, you don't see a way out, and things are sinking down, it's very hard to be, like, it's, and you, I'll just say you're correct. I I can't go down that road. I, I, that's a whole different a episode. Whole, I'm telling you. That's a whole different episode. And there are so many men who cannot say that because it's embarrassing for us. And it's like, oh, oh man, I can't, let, I can't let nobody know. So now we have that going on. We have performance anxiety going on. And <sighs> we have this... We have this secret shame that we can't really talk about because, like, I can't really as... I can't, as a man, say to my friend, "Hey, bro, I'm having trouble." Thank you. In the bedroom, huh? Because, uh, because, what is he gonna do with it? Yeah. What you gonna do with that with that information? Huh? He messed it up for him tonight. Now he probably can't focus, and he now he got a disorder. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, "Wait, man, hold on, man. If, if G going through it, and like, mm -hmm. I'm I'm worse than he is." <laughs> I'm not saying nothing. <laughs> We're not saying nothing. It's, it's the silence, the silence of the lambs. We're not saying nothing, and that's real, man. We we literally have. I'm glad that we we were able to have that moment. That's the first time I shared that ever, and and it's the truth. The truth is, 
I'm not ashamed of that. You know, that's a part of what was my my process to where I'm at now. But that part happened, man. So really, all of those things, like you said, combined, the sum total of all of that became weight. Yeah. And it's, I'm, it's weight. It's weight. It's a weight like we can't, like we don't really have we the way to no, articulate there's it. There's no like, way. There's no way to articulate it. Especially when you're talking about something that just comes down that easy. You didn't, you never experienced it. And it's like, this is really an easy form of heavy weight. Like it's, it fell and it hit and I'm just going to stay on the ground for a minute. But then I realized getting up, I'm either going to have to be a father because I'm not going to not dishonor, you know, I'm not going to not dishonor my, like, like not take care of my son. My son has to be, he has to be a priority for me because I was a priority for my dad, for my dad. Yeah. Now the, the marriage thing, I think I, I jumped in at 12 feet. I should have walked in at three. You feel me? I did jump in at 12. So, you know what? I can I can say I almost drowned, but I can get out of this. So I looked at that as a way of escape, which is not what I was looking for, but it was necessary because I didn't know what else was going to happen except things further plummeting. Um, so let, that caused let, it. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Um, when all of this when all this has happened, because we know, like, man, this is this is a sinking ship. It mm-hmm. ain't it ain't sunk yet. <laughs> but we're we're with the with the band on the ship playing <laughs> we're while qu- they're singing. We're quickly going down. We're going down. So when that happens, um are you able do you feel open enough to have the conversation with your wife then that like, hey, this ain't going well? I did. I did. And I, and we had a conversation together. Then we actually had a conversation with my dad, and we also had a conversation with her dad. And um, they both understood. I was going to ask, how did that go? It went well. It went well for me knowing that they both they were both empathetic. They were still hoping that, well, no, my dad was like, honestly, we didn't expect, as their son, they didn't expect me to be married in that predicament, especially that young, that soon. Her dad, um, till this day, he's an awesome man. He was he was very much like, hey, you know, if you need time, that's fine. But I wouldn't I wouldn't want you guys to like give up on each other. So she moved. I was in Atlanta. She moved back to Lynn Haven, Panama City, Florida. Mm. And she was with her parents and I moved in with my parents. How long did that last before y'all split? That was about it, almost a year and a half, two years. We we're separated. But I by that time though, I once I got off the ship, I knew I wasn't gonna get back on because it was I didn't really see any way that I can bring anything back, be it more essential or having more value than what I came in with. I now have a son. And now if we were struggling with one, two, five of us, now it's going to be six total. And I knew this was very selfish. It was very selfish of me, even my thought process. Now that I think back on it, hindsight, I knew that the, the, the other three kids, awesome kids, they're adults now, they already had a father that was working a, as an officer in the White House. Mm. So I'm like, their father can provide for them. So immediately it was like divide. I'm thinking about, okay, what do I need to become now to be a, a man to take care of my son? Because they already have a father, whether, you know, the mom, their mother, their mom and him aren't married. He's, he's able to take care of his three. I got to figure out how to take care of my one. So my mind just went straight to becoming a competent father. Yeah. That's all I kept thinking about now. I wasn't even thinking about how to get back in. I'm like, oh, I cannot be less of what I know my dad's been to me, to my son. Provision, provision wise, consistent wise, just being there for him. Um, and that was my focus because that was now a new, a new life that didn't have to be here. Man, it's crazy. You know what happens? Um, well, what happened with me and my wife at our rough times? Because we've been married 14 years. Praise Congrats, God. Sue. Appreciate Congrats. it. Yeah. Um, what a lot of people, what a, a lot of people glaze over about that fourteen year story, is that like we had like five years of hell. Mm, talk about <laughs> it. Talk about it, G. And um, there was a point in time where it was like, bro, we she literally, Pete, what are you doing to me? What are you doing to me? Why am I talking? Let's go, <laughs> huh? This is what we do, the husband type. <sighs> Yeah. All right, you got me. Okay. <laughs> there was man, there was a there was a point in time. And mind you, this is the window that we have all three of our girls. So at some point, we are having sex with each other. Yeah. <laughs> at some point. Yeah. We having sex with each other, we hate each other. Don't skip over that part. Cause that that happens too. Man. Okay. So 
feel free to jump in at any point in time. I'm not going to save you. Uh, okay. You got to keep going. Okay. <laughs> there was literally at one point in time where my wife told me um, there would be plenty of time. She was in the Navy at that time. Uh, and she would drive in about, um, it was an hour for her to go to work, to go to, uh, to go to get, go to base. Um, and she would tell me there were so many times where she would, she would think about, man, I would rather drive off of this highway and run into a tree no. and kill myself than, than coming home. Like, do you know how that makes you feel? First of all, as a person, but second of all, as a husband, like, man, I'm failing that bad. <laughs> Where that, my- that, that was articulated? Yeah. Yeah. This was in the first five years. Uh, Yeah. Wait, no, no, this was a five-year stretch. So, let's see, one, two, three. This is a year. Oh, it was a five-year stretch. Yeah. So, this is year, let's see, we had our oldest uh, in our third year. So it started getting bad then. So yeah. Uh so year three, four, five, six, yeah. seven, and a little bit of eight. So how did that make you feel to hear that? Because I thought that was an inner like monologue. I thought no, was- that was a very much outer monologue. <laughs> wow. So what did you how did you respond? Um so I, I didn't respond well. I I mean I was I was just heartbroken. Yes, yes. And I I mean, what do you do with that information? There's no what do you, what, how do you yeah. like okay you know yeah, 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 <laughs> how yeah. do you respond? But um um it like it made sense. Like it it hurt me. Uh, like I knew I knew I was failing as a husband. Mm. I knew I was failing as a husband. I was killing it as a Christian. Mm, say it again for the people in the back killing it as a christian but failing as a husband i absolutely was um and like i'm figuring out i'm thinking in my mind um because i always had an idea about how my marriage would be when i was married to a person i didn't actually know that that person was gonna be my wife (laughs) so i was trying to put Danielle, the person, into mm-hmm. the role of the wife that I created. There we go. That's powerful. That's big. But she wasn't that person. And I kept trying to drag her along. And she kept telling me that I'm not that person. And it was it was confusing to me at the same time because she loves me and she's trying to, you know, make it work. So she's trying to be that person and then still find out who she is at the same time. And like all of this is clashing and all of this is in the umbrella of being a new wife and a new mother, uh, 3000 feet, 3000 miles away in a state with no family. So all of this is happening at the same time. And, um, yeah, bro, it was it was tough <laughs> to say the least. But um Can I say something? Please. You I'm gonna save you. Okay. Cause not save you. I, first of all, I, I commend you. You're a great a great man. Given mm-hmm. the same scenario for me, that's why I would have left. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But you have 14. Where collectively I've seen 10. And took halftime, didn't even come back to the game for 34. I took halftime and left. And that's why I admire you. And that's why I can tell you now in my journey, what you're doing is what I'm actually getting into. That's the groove I'm in now. 